That was awful. Don't understand. How, I don't, extroverts, how do you do it? You couldn't even walk. There's no room. There are too many, there's too many people in there. Hey, what's up, Garden Friends? Jeff here. I was gonna film in Home Goods because it's spring and the pottery's out, but that was too much for me. I, the, no, there's no way I was gonna vlog in there. That and the music was really loud, so it wouldn't have worked out anyways. I did get a nice three piece pottery set, and I'll show you when we get back to the house. I'm gonna go back to the house, some catch up, get to look at, you know, what's been going on with certain things, and I don't know, you get to see the new pots. Really pretty new pots. Huh? Look at it. Oh, it's shiny. You can even see my reflection in there. What do we think? Isn't it beautiful? Tommy Bahama at Home Goods. They had these in sets of, I believe, 12, 16, and maybe 20 inch. Price is really good. This is, I think, $16.99. Where's the, where'd it go? I can find it. There it is, $16.99. Price on all of them was really good. So, of course, I, had, I got the whole set. Had to. It's not often you can find a whole set of nice, decent sized, beautifully glazed pottery for an affordable price. They look great, don't they? Uh, they weren't all $16.99. I think this one was maybe $19.99 and that one was $49.99. Which, okay, so it added up. But that's, that's, let me, it's fine. I like that when I'm filming videos and talking to my fellow plant people, I still, my brain falls into that mindset of, oh no, I have to justify the purchase. I know, y'all don't care. Y'all know what I mean. Some of y'all, and with your spouses or whatever your situation may be, sometimes you buy something like, okay, maybe I need to hide this. When can I sneak it in the house? Not saying I do that, but I understand where that comes from when you have a passion and a hobby and sometimes you got people in your life who are like, really, do you need more of the things? And need no obviously not but it's not gonna hurt to have some more i had caffeine that's hence all the stuttering that's going on i don't do caffeine all that often anymore and i had a great big giant green tea blue and all the ripple and the texture there's some cells in there and then some brown they had another set that looked just like it that was more of an almost aqua color I stood there and looked at them for a while because most of my pottery is more on the aqua side than the darker blue side but it just, like, something was off. The color didn't look right to me. It was more of maybe a faded teal than an aqua, and I thought that the dark would just, I don't know. I just liked it better. 29 not $19.99. They all have drainage holes. They're pretty thick and fairly sturdy. They're definitely not lightweight. I don't know about frost proof, like if these should be left out during a freeze. I'm going to assume that they shouldn't, just based on the inside. Usually pottery that is frost proof, has more of a texturing on the inside and they don't look just like straight up ceramic, right? I mean, there's nothing going on in there, but they are really thick and that is generally one of the things that determines whether or not you can leave a pot outside, the thickness and it has to do with how they're fired, make sure that there's no bubbles inside of the ceramic. I don't, I don't know. Let's see, does this thing say anything on it? it says, oh, <laughs> it's right there. Never mind. Frost resistant. Yeah, isn't that great? Good to know. I looked at that at the store. I fidgeted with these tags and was watching. I'm not lettering. I'll put it right there. It's fine. And I was going, oh, I shouldn't get them if they're not frost resistant, but they're little so I can move them in out of the house. It said right there. It was right on the tag. Right there. Frost resistant. I was a bit overwhelmed if you couldn't tell from the start of the video. Because when I went in the store, it was very calm and very peaceful. Then all of a sudden, it was just a flood of people. It was like practically a stampede <laughs> it came through the door. It was too much. That particular home goods is very small. The aisles are very narrow, so you can only go one cart at a time through them. And you just you spend a lot of time standing around and waiting for people who aren't paying attention to move. Particular location just in my jam. I didn't go there for pottery. I went there because I need a vase. They only had two vases. I don't know what that's about. They don't sell vases <laughs> anymore. They're not for me. Hi, Toby. Oh, boy, Toby. Oh, good. And now Turbo is here. So many dogs. I know. I got on your level. This is what happens when I get on your level. I don't know how well it's Turbo. I'm doing something here, man. I know what he wanted. He just wanted up on his swing. He loves to hang out on that swing. But yeah, I think they're really nice. The price was great. They had a good assortment of pottery. I only saw two sets of the pom Pommy Bahama, Tommy Bahama stuff, but I'm sure there's more. And, you know, from location to location, that stuff varies. I was just blown away by the price and the texture. I love the texture on these containers. Le Beau. A bit, a bit, whatever. <laughs> they have a pot that is similar to this. It has like a timber texture on it, and I absolutely love them, but I haven't seen them for sale in a long time. And when I have, they've just been outrageously expensive. So this is this is good. This satisfied that little niche that I've been wanting to fill. This looks like it's a different color because it's sitting in the sun. They're all more like this, whatever you would call that color. 
that's what they are. They're fun, they're rippled, have a nice texture, feel heavy duty, great deal for the price. Never a fan of pottery where the top <laughs> is smaller than the middle, which the middle isn't really, but you see how it comes up like this? So when I pop these up, I'm going to have to be sure to keep the soil level down fairly far because when it becomes time to repot, or if I do annuals, who knows what's going to happen with them, it's a problem getting a ball out, from, you know, the hole's too small, right? It's going to be hard to pull the plant out. That's not going to work out. I'm thinking with one of them, I would like to do some of the horsetail brush, you know, the stuff that just looks like reeds, just deep green reeds with the stripes on them. Something about these just, it's making me want that somewhat aquatic vibe, I suppose is what we would call that. Something with lots of lushness and greenness and not much as far as trailers go. I know I always fall off with that. I say no trailers and then trailers happen. Creeping Jenny. Yeah, Creeping Jenny. That would be really pretty coming over the front of this because it holds nice and tight to the sides of the containers. <laughs> What's happening here? It's not even time for any of this yet. Yeah, Horsetail Rush, Lime Zinger, Xanthosoma, and uh, maybe a Mr. Goldstrike Akuba. That could look nice. They don't, they're not going to want as much sun. Yeah, Kuba won't. Not on this patio of fry. I don't know. Maybe a um, Vitei, the, what is it? An Alpinia Vitei with the beautiful white variegation on it. That'd be really pretty. I never see those for sale. But if I had one, that would, that would be beautiful. That'd be a lovely set. The Vitei may not want as much light as the other. There's plenty of time to figure this out. It's not even time for tropicals. It's starting to feel like it, though. We have a date predicted next week where they're saying 78 degrees. That's going to be glorious. There's only one night left in the 20s in the forecast. Oh, well, at least for the next 10 days. March, it wouldn't surprise me if March ends up being colder than February. I think that that happened last year. But the nurseries are opening up. They have pansies and violas. It's not a lot to choose from, but it's something, which means hopefully the next week or two. I'm trying to wait till March. We're almost there. I don't know why. I just feel like I need to wait till March. And if I can get there and just start pulling out all the deads. You see all the deads? Look at them gross. Get out of there. Need to pull those out, replace them with some pansies, something else for spring, and then, I don't know, I'll probably end up putting something in these, but I should wait. I probably won't, but I know I should. Oh, and whichever one the horsetail goes inside of, doing a nice thick layer of that dark, smooth beach pebble, that'd be really nice. That'd look great. I'm still doing it. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, so you have Redemption or Waikiki. Those would be pretty in these as well. I could, well, no, these aren't, that's not big enough for any of those colocasias, but there are options. Lots of fun, colorful options. I know Southern Living has the Redemption, and a lot of vendors that I've seen have the Redemption, so those should be all over the place. Waikiki should be more common this year. Gonna be some fun plants to pick from when they start rolling in, so that's still gonna be a while. Okay, quick deviation for some cuteness. Just popped inside because the dogs wanted back in, and I saw this. Aren't they so cute? They're not friends. They're friendly, and there's progress. They're getting there, right, Pumpkin? Hey, baby girl. He's so cute. He's such a cute pumpkin. Yes, you are. Wonder if the pendo, maybe that might fit in one of those pots. Just a temporary thing, like a, as a just temporarily as a cash pot. Oh yeah. Oh, it's cute. This is dumb. I need to stop. There was no reason to do that. I've been walking around thinking that the bulbs should be coming up. They really should be. First, hold on. Never gave an update last week with these guys, the copper top viburnums, they weren't looking good. They're fine. They got watered. We had a lot of snow and it was very cold. And since then it's been in the 70s and 60s and absolutely beautiful outside. The way things go with the weather, it looks like there's some action going on down here. I think these are, get out of the way, bamboo. Got some little hyacinths coming up. Not seen anything yet from the daffodils. Nothing going on over here either. Up back here, what are you? I don't remember. I think those might be the precocious daffodils. I'm glad that those are coming up, if that's what they are. Whatever they are, I'm just glad they're coming up. Nothing over here. I feel something. Oh, that's just a piece of bamboo runner. Don't they know that it's about time? Yeah, okay. Good. I've been worried. Talked about it last week. A lot of the bulbs are mushy and not looking very good, but the ones in those containers, at least those seem okay. As far as the other 1,200 go that I planted, I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. I noticed when I was out today that there were a lot of bulbs coming up in a lot of places. Lots of tulips and things. Don't know what that is. Can't remember. Some kind of daffodil. There's an allium starting to pop up. Things are waking up. This is exciting. I had planted a ton of tulips in here. And it doesn't look like any... Oh! What's that? Look at that. That's exciting. But what are you? Doesn't look like tulips. 
I guess it does. It's probably just early stages of tulips. I might go ahead and cover that up. I don't want to shock them. Oh, and I'm standing on tulips right now. It's the thing with the bulbs. Sometimes you forget where you planted them. Oh, there's more right here. Look at that. Got them coming up all over the place. These sable miners look like garbage. That's what happens. I covered them. I put lights on them. It was in the negatives for several days. What can you do? If it weren't for those several days, these would be looking great. At least the center spears look good on them. But you need to pay attention to is the central spear. And that looks good. There's still... Oh, there's some green. The ones over here, those are defoliated a lot, which is really surprising because the... the well, these are more exposed. So that... I don't know. It doesn't make sense that those look worse than these. Although that could partially be... Actually, maybe so much sun. They may have fried over there. That happens too sometimes. I had planted a ton of tulips over here. There's something happening there. A little nub. Nub from something. Lots of daffodils. Those have been working their way up since like January. They peaked up when it was warmer and then it got cold and they sat still. It looks like there's probably some damage to some of the buds on them. That's what happens when they come up in January. Not surprised by that. Black bamboo. Eh. Oh, yeah, there it is. That will put up new growth in the later spring, so I'm not all that worried about that. The Little Jim Magnolia, apparently we're having a garden tour now. Wasn't intentional, but here we are. It's not dead, but I think that it's potentially on its way out with broadleaf evergreens, evergreens in general. It takes time for the cold damage to really show on them. As we move further and further, closer to spring, start to see all that bad stuff on them. It's one of those things where you just have to keep an eye on it. It's probably going to drop the majority of these leaves probably going to need to cut back get all the dead wood off of it and hopefully it'll flush back out and if not then so long i'll get rid of a replant with a what is it k paris those are great the k paris it's a hybrid it's a cross between the little gem and the bracken's brown they're more cold hardy they flower more profusely excellent option if i can find them they're really hard to find there are also a lot of tulips over here but it looks like something's been digging so i don't know what's going to happen in that spot nothing over here not seeing anything. I see where some tulip bulbs have been pulled up. A whole bunch of them pulled up. I planted those down fairly deep, so that's odd. Don't know how that happened. Plant them deep enough and the ground froze and it squeezed them out. Speaking of digging, I've had some issues with the squirrels over here. They've been running through planting their acorns and just wreaking havoc in the pottery. I mean, it's nice to get the top of the soil turned over. And I think most of these bulbs are probably not going to come up in these containers anyways, but I feel like they'd have a better chance if they weren't getting torn up all the time. Luckily, the laurels are not doing what that magnolia down there is doing. They're staying nice and green. I like to see that. It was around this time last year when they started to slowly brown up and everything just went to hell. It wasn't great. That's when I started to get bummed out. What is this? What are you? That is not a bulb. That is, I think, an inflorescence from one of the pedicets. The pedicets are starting to pop up, which is fun. Could be a problem since, you know, I planted this whole thing full of bulbs not taking into account that the pedicets will probably come up before the bulbs pedicides pedicets i don't care how you say it the butterbirds when they come up in the spring their foliage is much smaller they don't really start to put up big foliage until i don't know mid to late may so i think that that would be okay intermingling with the bulbs if the bulbs even come up i'm not seeing anything going on over here shadier spot though so it makes sense gonna take them longer to come up okay and then in this area i have a ton of spanish bluebells I think some crocus, various sizes of daffodils. I have the watch-up daffodils in the back going from like here all the way up there. And smaller ones in the front. It looks like there might be, there's something going on over here with some of those daffodils. Maybe something right here. Yeah, no, that's just a leaf. Right there though. See it? Look, look. Oh, it's so exciting. What is that? That's not a bulb. <laughs> what happened back here? the heck one two three four then dug up the bulbs by something i probably the squirrels that's the only thing i can figure i use the bulb auger and it's in six inch or four inch by six inch auger look at that it's not even underground anymore and i dropped them all into the bottom of their holes looks like i have some replanting to do but they're alive i'm just gonna leave those where they are for right now so hopefully they're in the proximity of where i had originally planted them because uh, I, I don't remember where the other bulbs are so i don't want to just go plopping holes all over the place and potentially dig them up there's two more over there that i missed what's going on oh, see here's a nice example of the smaller leaves <laughs> you know how tiny that is 
tiny little baby leaves. That's all you get from them. It'll be about double that size in a few weeks. Any other daffodils? It's like some tete-a-tetes are coming up. Those are not ones that I planted. I have tete-a-tetes that pop up all over the place, mostly from spring planters. When they're done doing their thing, I just dump them and let them do their thing. They land where they land and get mixed in with the soil and they come back every single year. It looks like there's some action from a, I believe this might be a precocious or an apricot swirl. Daffodil that is. I did larger daffs over here and then smaller daffodils and bluebells mixed in with tulips in the front. The tete -tet little daffodils and the bluebells should be coming up about the same time, so hopefully in a few weeks. And then the larger daffodils are in the back and tulips in the front. We'll see what happens. I have to give that more time. Things are just now getting going. And then this area from here, well, no, really from down there and over, I just filled with tulips and bulbs. It looks like they, a lot of them got dug up over here too. What the crap? Okay, so I have some replanting to do. It's okay though. There's bits of green coming up. So even though the planters, probably an epic fail as far as the bulbs go, at least there's going to be a lot coming up in the ground. What about these? I didn't check these last week. Look at all the, you see all the acorns? See all that? That's from the squirrels coming in here planting their acorns. Little gardeners. These had a hyacinth and a lot of daffodils. Looks like there's something, got some green going on here. I believe that that is a, a daffodil. Yeah, that feels like a daffodil. I don't usually lose hyacinths in the winter, so I'll be surprised if those don't do anything, but so far, not seeing anything from them. Oh, and a little bit of green right in there. This is good. I'm excited now. I'm confused because there were like 75 bulbs in these containers, and I just had my hand way down in there. I don't even feel them. Did I plant them that deep? I don't usually plant bulbs all that deep in containers because, well, that can go south very, very quickly. They tend to rot out if you plant them too deep in a container. Yeah. Yeah, okay, all right, I just planted them extra deep, so it's probably going to be a little bit longer until I get to see anything out of those. Well, there was a fun garden update miniature <laughs> little late winter tour. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Sorry not much else has gone on plant-wise in this video. I was going to rearrange the plant shelves and mess with things in the grow space this week, but the neem I neemed last night, I sprayed neem in there, it is just, it's so intense, it's making me nauseous and giving me headaches, and I just, I don't want to spend time in there. It needs a day to breathe. Generally when I neem, I give it probably two days until I spend much time out there and I just forgot that I needed to do this today for the channel, for the youtube -y stuff. So my bad, sorry. Everything is so freaking dry out here. That's part of why I'm not too, okay. All right, that did not want to focus and see how things are starting to desiccate. That's winter burns. It would have done that anyways, but it would be better if things were hydrated so that wouldn't be as much of an issue. There's some pruning I need to do. The hydrangea trees were about there. They could be cut back, but everything is so dry. I don't have the water hooked up yet, and I thought about hooking it up, but I really would be more comfortable waiting in probably another two weeks. Probably okay. The coldest temperature in the forecast for the next 10 days is 29. That's not likely to burst a pipe, as long as it's very brief. I've <laughs> let it go way colder than that before without removing the spigot, without detaching the hose and shutting the water off. The thing is, whoever built this house, they put the spigots, the hose spigots, like this far from the ground. And so they come out at an angle from the side of the house and you end up with about this much room to work with. It's a huge pain in the butt connecting the water in the spring. It takes a while. It's just really tricky to get in there. It's not something that I like to just throw on and then take back off and throw on and take back off. I like for it to be a one and done thing. Whole point there, it looks like there's going to be some rain, maybe even some storms coming up here so things will get a good watering. And once things are more hydrated, I'm more comfortable pruning. I know you wouldn't think that it matters, but I just don't like to mess with the plants when they're dry and they're coming out from the winter stress and the constant temperature fluctuations. It's supposed to be near 80 some days and still dropping to the 30s and 40s and some lows in the 20s. It's just, that's too much. I'd rather just leave them alone, give them a splash of water with a watering can if they look like they really need water. Otherwise, basically probably another two to three weeks maximum. I don't think I can wait longer than that, but another two to three weeks until I really start doing much of anything out here. And I'm not saying that there's not a possibility. Maybe next week I might hit up a nursery and grab some pansies to pop into some planters where I need to pull some other things, but you know what I mean. Heavy stuff. I trying to remind myself, <laughs> just breathe. Take it easy. We're almost there. It's almost time. Lots of bulb progress compared to last week. I know I just did a bulb thing last week, so it probably wasn't even necessary to talk about, but what we got from everything I showed last week was that it looked like a lot of the bulbs weren't coming up. Comparatively, you know, all the places I've been going, I'm 
seeing people's bulbs come up and I'm like, what's wrong with my bulbs? But so far I'm thinking it might just be these containers around the pool and the ones around the hot tubs looking like everything else. I'm going to get something, which is great. Well, nothing's coming up over there yet. And I planted a lot in that spot, but again, it's February. So just need to give it some more time. Now what's going on in your gardens? I know y'all had a lot, uh, a lot of what just happened to my mouth. <laughs> I know a lot of y'all are further down south and your bulbs are already up and some of y'all are outside doing plantings and having fun. We're almost there. Yeah, comment down below and say I love talking to everybody. Hope y'all are doing well. Get to do some more stuff out here, hopefully next week. Mostly in the growth space, I promise. I'll remember not to neem the day before I'm going to film. That was stupid. I should have done that. Oops, that's just what happened. Do you like the pots? Seen some neat stuff. I like the trend of pottery that I'm starting to see show up in the parking lots at the nurseries. A lot of the nurseries aren't open yet, but I can see in the parking lots filling up with the pottery. I'm liking the colors more than I have in a few years. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.